It can be too much to take, holding on so strong when I'm about to break. Good evening, my name is Victoria and welcome to my lupus channel. On today's video, I'll be discussing how lupus affects the eyes. And to my left is a breakdown of the different things that I plan on talking about. Um, Everything that I'll be discussing with you today it more so affects um, what I go through and it's just a combination of things that I've come to learn throughout the years and experienced. I will be sharing links at the very end and also in the section below on uh, just references that you could go to if you want to learn more about the things I'm going to be discussing um, in better detail. So let's get this started. When it comes to lupus, there's different ways that the eyes could get affected by this. Um, one, it could be either affected through medication. Uh, two, it could be affected by medical condition. And that I'll be talking about right now. So with medical condition, there is a disorder called Sjogren's the syndrome. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, um, but it's, I have it written down right here. And it's basically an autoimmune condition that involves the tear and salivary glands getting damaged. Um, and in consequence to that, what ends up happening is that um, it makes your mouth dry or your eyes dry. And I particularly have this condition and I suffer from both dry eyes and dry mouth. Um, in part of the dry eyes, since that's what we're focusing on the eyes today, what I end up experiencing is um, a lot of itchiness in my eyes. There are many times in the day where sometimes I, I just I feel like there's something in my eye with maybe an eyelash or a debris but then when I look there isn't anything. Uh, my eyes are very sensitive um, and because they're so dry I just I feel like I feel like they're overused even though they aren't overused if that makes any sense but that is what happens with Sjogren's um, syndrome dry eyes is a concern and how I treat that is through um, eye drops I use refresh they are lubricant eye drops that I get from Costco and I use it morning and evening. Sometimes I use it more than that depending on how my eyes are feeling. Um, and my doctor also prescribed me this eye drop called Restasis, um, which I think it's, it helps produce tears from what I know, but I'm not comfortable with taking Restasis. Um, one, it's prescripted. And two, I don't want to become dependent on it, which is what happens with restasis and I mean I'm already taking so much medication um, as is so I don't want to have to add on to it if it's not an absolute requirement which at this point it isn't um, based on what I discussed with the optometrist that saw me last year uh, so we'll see how that goes um, but yeah that's the medical condition that could affect the eyes and there are other conditions as well I'm sure but I'm not familiar with them um, maybe that's something that I could do for a future video which is to research more on other conditions that may affect the eyes pertaining to lupus that is um, but that's for medical condition so the next one would be medication so Lupus 
requires you to take certain medications um, for disease management. And one of those medications is called Plaquenil, or also known as hydroxychloroquine. I think I pronounced it correctly. Um, but Plaquenil, which I have written down here, it's a medication that's typically used to treat malaria um, or rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. It's one of those medications that rheumatologists will prescribe to you um, early on to your diagnosis. It's supposed to help prevent um, organ damage that may occur early on um, with your lupus and it's a wonderful medication that has helped me tremendously. It's minimized symptoms that I used to suffer from back in 2008, um, like Raynaud's phenomenon, like that was a huge help for me um, with that symptom. And that symptom was probably one of the worst that I had with my lupus that I don't suffer from as much anymore. Knock on wood, that could always change. But, you know, even though it's a wonderful medication that is able to prevent further damage or and you know help manage your disease like all medications it comes with a price there's a consequence to it and that consequence in relation to the eyes is uh, retinal toxicity and so what that means is that through using that medication over a period of time or at a certain um, higher dosage, it has the potential to damage your eyes, um, your retina specifically, and that's a big concern. It's a big concern because your eyes helps you with your day-to-day -day functions, and if something goes wrong with these, then, you know, what do you do? But a couple of the things that could get affected um, when you're taking Plaquenil, if by chance your eyes get damaged by it, is you know your peripheral vision or your you know ability to see color, um, your ability to you know see straight or from a distance. So it's it definitely has major concerns. Now. It's not very common from what I've learned. It doesn't happen too often, like where the eyes get damaged. But even still, that's not something that you want to take for granted or risk. And so with that, along with, you know, Sjogren's syndrome, which not all lupus patients get diagnosed with, but could get, you know, it's always a possibility you have to take steps to make sure that you're doing your best to take care of your eyes. And by doing that, you help prevent, you know, different complications that could occur, you know, long term or later on. Um, so the next thing that we're going to be discussing is what do you do? Um, so you would go to the doctor, you would visit an eye doctor. And if you're taking Plaquenil particularly for your lupus, um, it requires for you to have what they call a baseline eye exam. And what that does is they check your eyes right before you take the medication or just when you started the medication, you know, to just see where the status um, of your eyes are at, like health-wise, like if there's anything wrong with it already at that point um, and that just helps determine the progression throughout the years if your your eyes start to get worse or you know there ends up being something that comes up later on and after you do that the baseline eye exam and you're taking the medication on a you know day-to-day -day basis for the first five years I would say you would have to get routine checkups at least once a year, like annually, it must happen. 
and when you do get your checkup, they normally do a comprehensive eye exam. And comprehensive meaning that, you know, they check for everything. Like, you know, normally when you're, you don't have any other health conditions, but your eyesight starts to get bad and you go to the optometry and they do, you know, a vision test on you where, you know, see if they, you could read from a distance and they examine your eyes. And um, in addition to that, those are things that they'll do. But in addition to that, they'll also do a color test on you. They'll also t check on your eye pressure. They'll also do some sort of um, scanning or imaging of your eyes you know, to get a deeper view of the nerves and see if there's any damage that's actually occurred that may not always be seen um, just through those like lamps that slit lamps that an optometrist or an ophthalmologist would use and that's something that you know you need to get done once a year now if you've been taking Plaquenil for a longer period of time like I have I've been on Plaquenil for nine years already. Yeah, nine years, because I was diagnosed in 2008. That, by that um, time, I think you would have to do twice a year, which that's what I've been doing these last three years now um, with the ophthalmologist that I've had um, recently. And I mean, it just, it could be a pain having to visit the eye doctor and doing all these tests and it does take time but it's well worth it i mean if that's what you have to do to make sure that your eyes are functioning and nothing has gotten worse then you should do it and should take it seriously because your eyes are so important um, and being able to do so many different things and you don't want to take that for granted. Um, so those are all that I wanted to share with you in regards to how lupus affects the eyes. I mean, there's just so much more to share, honestly, but that could probably take an hour's worth um, of video and I don't want to bore you with all those details. But like I said, I will be including links and you can visit those links and check them out read more about how lupus could affect the eyes um, i know that there's also inflammation that could occur or the risk for infections so that should be interesting to learn about uh, thank you very much for watching my video and i'll see you guys soon